Hi, in this video, let's take a look at another thermoimager. This time it's an Infisense P2 IR sensor that hooks up to your Android phone. You can see just how small this sensor really is. This is a centimeter ruler, and you can see that it measures just above two centimeters in this direction here. But don't be fooled by its size. It has pretty impressive thermal resolution, coming at 256 by 192, and it only costs slightly more than $250 at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong, $250 is a lot of money, but for thermal imagers of this resolution, this price point is a real bargain, considering other brands on the market can easily cost twice as much, if not more. Banggood provided this unit for me for a review, and as usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. Now, as I have mentioned before again and again, I think the manufacturer could have given it a better product name. In my opinion, Infisense just doesn't really have a ring to it. It would sound much better if it's something like Infinisense. Anyway, I digress. But by looking at Banggood's website though, it does seem that the P2 thermal imager potentially has at least two brand names. One is the Infinisense that I have right here. The other one is the InfiRay that is currently advertised on Banggood's website and is linked in the video description below. This is quite common as we have seen many products are essentially rebranded for different resellers, but the underlying hardware should be the same. I know when I reviewed the Unity UTI-85A a while ago, I mentioned that I personally prefer a standalone design rather than the P2 sensor that we are looking at here, which requires a smartphone to operate. That is true, but uh, after I played with this little device for a while, I can see the benefit of using a smartphone as the host. One significant benefit is the underlying OS and the processing power a smartphone has nowadays. There are a lot of features that can easily be implemented on an Android system, which definitely adds to the user experience, which we will take a look shortly. Now, speaking of the software, unfortunately, you have to download the APK installer directly from a Chinese website following the QR code provided along with the product. The good news is that there isn't much drama there, and uh, the only Chinese word you needed to recognize is for the install button. You may need to relax the security setting in your browser a little bit to allow the download and installation of the APK packages, but that was about it. Unfortunately, most Chinese Android software packages are not on the App Store. I'm not into politics and uh, certainly don't know the reason why, but that's the reality. Without an official app store could be an issue for some users. But personally, I find the app quite polished. There's nothing intrusive and uh, it passed security scan without any issues. But I wanted to point this out beforehand so that you know what to expect if you get one of these P2 thermal imagers for yourself. Now let's take a look at the specifications. First is the resolution. As mentioned earlier, this thermal imager has an IR resolution of 256 by 192. This is quite amazing for thermal images. At this resolution, you should be able to discern anything in the IR image alone without the help of a visible spectrum image for comparison. If you recall, the Unity UTI-85A I reviewed a while ago only had a thermal resolution of 80 by 60, and even at that low resolution, we were able to use that thermal imager effectively to investigate electronic circuits. So I fully expect much better performance from this P2 sensor. Although not specified, I assume that the sensor used in this device is some kind of a UFPA, or uncooled focal plane array, which consists of a matrix of microbolometers. Another spec that is quite impressive is the frame rate. The P2 has a frame rate of 25Hz, which means the recorded video is going to be just as smooth as taken with your visible spectrum camera. The noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD, of this sensor is also very good. It is specified at 50 mK at room temperature. The lower the NETD, the sharper the image, as there would be less thermal noise. Again, putting this back into perspective, the Unity UTI-85A has an NETD of 150 millikelvins. 
So I would expect far superior image quality besides the increased resolution, which we will take a look very shortly. Another important spec is the temperature measurement range. The range for this sensor is specified between minus 20 degrees Celsius to 170 degrees Celsius, or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 338 degrees Fahrenheit. The higher range is less than the 400 degrees Celsius or 752 degrees Fahrenheit number we saw in the Unity UTI 85A. This does limit your ability to measure, say, the soldering iron tip temperature, but that's not the primary use of this thermal imager, in my opinion. And by the way, it seems that they're quite proud of their indigenous ASIC design, and they wanted to make sure you know about it. Okay, enough talking. Let's plug it in and uh, play it around. Oh, by the way, one last thing. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let me show you the nice box it came in. So this uh, little sensor comes in with a rather nice box and it feels very premium. And you can see that there is a magnet. You can close the side with that magnet. And inside we do have a few accessories. Well, not really accessories. We have a carrying pouch and uh, a lens cloth. And there isn't a detailed product manual or anything like that. It's just a very short get started guide and a warranty certificate on the one side and the other side gives you very simple instructions on how to install software and how to use it. And that's about it. And the other one is just a QC card that tells you that this passed the inspections. And beyond that, there's nothing else in this package. But I have to say the box feels very nice in your hand, certainly as to the premium feel of this device. Now let me plug it into my Android phone so we can take a look together here. By the way, you can plug it either way. So right now I'm facing the other way so that we can see what the thermal image it takes. And uh, it does take a few seconds to boot up. You can see the application is launched. Once it's boot up, I suspect, yep, you can see what is in the background. By the way, the hotspot right now, you see that is the isolation transformer right there. And uh, because it's always on, that's why it's showing. Now, it's probably a little bit difficult to see from the screen here. Unfortunately, this is a through the cell phone screen. But later on, I will post some pictures, maybe overlay it on the video so you can see it a little better. But right now, what we're trying to do is you can see already, see how fast the refresh rate is, and definitely it is very useful here. And uh, let me just put my hand behind it. You can see my hand right there. By the way, you probably saw that little glitch there, and I'm not sure if you can hear. There is also a shutter here inside this little device, and that's very typical for the thermal camera to calibrate itself. So let me try to see if we can hear that. I'm going to try to be quiet, maybe put it closer to my microphone here. And uh, let's see if you can hear. I'm not sure if you heard that, but I can also manually trigger that uh, calibration mode by pressing this uh, camera button. So let me put it near my microphone. You can hear that. I'm not sure if you heard that click. Anyway, so that's the shutter. The shutter itself does automatically engage once a while. So that's when you see the frame start freezing. And uh, that's what happened a moment ago. But uh, once it's in that mode, you can see that uh, we are able to measure the images. And of course, nothing back there is powered on. But nevertheless, you can see some of the pictures through the IR imager. Now, that's because different materials have different emissivity. That's why you're seeing the contour of different uh, equipment back there. Anyway, so what we're going to do right now is not necessarily the uh, image itself, but I wanted to take a look at the manual to see what kind of function we have. Currently, we're on this uh, in the easy mode. You can see that we already can lock into different uh, temperatures. It automatically detects the hottest spot and the cold spot and also what is in the center of the screen here. In uh, the professional mode, let's uh, change it to that. You can actually do quite a bit here. For instance, you can enable the temperature range and obviously right now we are a little bit of uh, too narrow here so you can see that we can see the depends on the different range of the temperature you can color code it accordingly so that's the feature of this uh, temperature range here so let's remove that 
and maybe I press it again. Let's, yeah. And also you can kind of, uh, for instance, you can select a region and within that region, you can also identify the hot and cold spot. So that could be quite useful. Another thing, interesting thing is, uh, for instance, you can draw a line and then you can measure along that line. What is your hot spot? What is the coldest spot? So that's very interesting. So I remove that and let's see what else. And also, of course, you can just place your cursor on any spot, I would imagine. Yeah, on any spot here. And you can see that we we'll have three spots. You can already read the three different spots are showing different temperature measurements. So that is a very neat feature indeed. But for the majority of the time, I think that even the easy one is more than sufficient. So that's a very, very rich in feature for sure. So now let's take a look at the manual system and see what we got. Oh, by the way, before I show you the manual, you can also change, of course, your color scheme here. So right now, this is actually my favorite color scheme. So let's uh, aim it as something that is more interesting. It's back there. Later on, I'm going to show some other thermal images. And uh, you can press this button and you can see that we have different uh, color schemes here. So this is some of the normal ones. Now the black and white, a lot of people like that. And I like this uh, iron red spectrum. And of course you have different ones. You can see that. Another interesting feature of this uh, thermal camera is that you have this, uh, I call it a picture in picture functionalities here. So if you click on that, you will see the actual visible spectrum camera is shown up here. And uh, the IR image is essentially pretty much in the same region. Now, this is not exactly an overlay of the image. And I suspect it probably has some difficulty to actually overlaying the visible spectrum image over the IR image because it needs to be able to detect a different uh, distance between the IR camera and the actual visible spectrum camera, which is on this side. So that might be some difficulty there. But nevertheless, this feature I think is actually pretty decent, especially if you want to see what exactly you are looking at. Now, given the high resolution of this IR camera, I don't think it's necessary to use the visible spectrum camera that often. Now let's take a look at a circuit board. I know that you are probably dying to see that. So for that, I'm looking at this uh, Arduino board and you can see that we are able to pick up a lot of the details. That is thanks to the high resolution of the IR sensor here. Now you will notice that although the P2 has much higher IR resolution, in my opinion, it is not as well suited for electronics work as the Unity UTI 85A I reviewed a while ago. And this may be due to the fact that the minimal focal distance, as you can see here, I'm not able to focus it very close to the target as I could with the UTI 85A and still remain in focus. This limits the effective resolution you get. The closest distance I can get focused with this P2 sensor seems to be at around, actually a little bit closer to 20 centimeters, maybe at about 15 or 10 centimeters. And that's the closest I can get. And you can see that the three pin regulator just about right there. So if you recall that in that UTI 85A test, we can see that very clearly because we actually can put the sensor head right next to that regulator. Whereas here, if I put that close, you see that we are not able to discern the feature because it's out of focus. But this sensor does have a lot higher resolution and you certainly get a large field of view thanks to that higher resolution. And of course, you can see that we still have that uh, the heat signature from the Arduino board here. But right now, I think I will show you is if I place my hand here and as we have done with the other IR sensor, you will see the IR signature of my hand on the table. That is uh, pretty cool here. Of course, one of the key advantages of a smartphone based IR sensor is that you can use it to record videos. And that's something that is lacking on the UTI 85A. Actually, I like this feature quite a bit. And by the way, if you plug in the sensor to a computer, it will recognize it as a standard webcam 
and therefore anything you can do with a webcam you can do with this uh, sensor that makes it very useful as well so i thought i would just share with you some of the pictures and uh, videos i took earlier and uh, let's uh, take a look here That's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video, and all in all, I'm very impressed by the performance and quality of this little P2 IR sensor. The Android software is very polished and easy to use. Now, the only thing I wish they could have included is a small hard carrying case rather than this little pouch that is included, as the IR lens is exposed and protruded a little bit, so you do need to be very careful when handling it to avoid accidental damage. In my opinion, it doesn't really need to be this small. But hey, that's a statement right there, letting you know how technologically advanced this device really is. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will catch up with you next time.